Kwasi Kwarteng, uh, I, I, you know, I, I think he's, I think he is a spectacular author. He wrote a really good book on Margaret Thatcher, uh, but he will go down forever as the person with the prodigious package so admired by Liz Truss. However, this evening he was on uh, GB News and he defined the problem of Nigel Farage's um, spat with Coots brilliantly. He said, Alison Rose did the worst thing that any banker could possibly do short of running off with the money. She betrayed client confidentiality. Now, when Farage first raised this issue, uh, he was uh, he was accusing Coote so firmly of dishonesty that he was potentially in danger of being uh, of, of triggering legal action against himself. Uh, and then, and then he came out with the goods and demonstrated the dishonesty so brilliantly, so brilliantly that he's done us all a favour. Whatever you think of Nigel Farage, um, he is the hero of the hour at the moment because the banks have been up themselves completely, more so even than Nigel Farage is up himself. But the banks are utterly, utterly self-serving. And that's not their job. Their job is to serve the customer. And if you've ever had a bank conversation uh, in the last two years, you will know exactly what I'm talking about where they condescend and patronise to a degree which is unacceptable, utterly unacceptable. Uh, now, could Farage now sue Coots? I think the answer is, I'm, I'm not a lawyer, but I think the answer is absolutely, fundamentally, yes. And should he? Absolutely. And I think, I think uh, the public will get behind him and help him. I think this is something that if anybody wants to crowdfund Farage, uh, he would be only too... Uh, he, would, he would have his choice. He would have his choice. And I'm sure he's taken legal advice, and I'm sure this is one of the serious options. And if Coots is going to continue to be so bloody-minded and stupid as not to give him back his bank accounts and to play around with this nonsense that, oh, yes, we offered you a bank account in NatWest for yourself, not for your business and 10 banks that he's approached have all rejected him because of the reputation that Coots have managed to stir up for him. Yes, yes, indeed, he should sue. Absolutely. And he should sue on, I think, two grounds. Number one, the, lo uh, the breach of confidentiality, which I think is enormous. That's, that's enormous. And more than that, it's been admitted in Alison Rose's ridiculous um, apology. Ridiculous. I don't even know how she managed to get get that through her own lawyers because it um, it, it 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 concedes far too much. Um, you know, I, I I think she's not only guilty of uh, a breach of confidentiality; she's guilty of stupidity. And I don't think I particularly want to have a bank manager who is stupid as well as dishonest and untrustworthy. So she. She, she admits the dishonesty and she admits the lack of confidentiality. She talks about a serious error in judgment. That's an admission of her actions, I think. Um, I confirm that Mr. Farage is a Coots customer. But she should never have done that. Uh, she thought that the information was in the public domain. That's her defence. It's a weak defence. I wasn't part of the decision-making. Well, then, she's tittle-tattling about something that she doesn't know anything about to a seasoned BBC journalist. It's just offence after offence after offence. And then she caps it all by saying it's a commercial decision, that uh, it's all about how much money Farage has got in the bank. Rubbish. Uh, look, 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 look what she says. She was under the impression that the decision to close Mr. Farage's accounts was solely a commercial one. That's a lie. That's a lie. It may, it, it, it may of course, in, in, in her case, be explained by the fact that she was uh, stupid and ill-informed. But in terms of her speaking for the bank, and the bank then, apparently the BBC contacted the bank to check this, 
and the bank confirmed it. It was a lie. It was a lie. It was not a commercial decision. It was a decision based on the fact they didn't, they didn't like Mr. Farage's profile. It was a PEP issue, not an issue about him being uh, below the financial threshold. So, breaking confidentiality, breaking trust, um, smearing honesty all over all over the lavatory floor, and finally demonstrating a level of stupidity uh, that um, <laughs> that simply suggests she isn't uh, she she isn't worth the the millions of pounds she is paid per year to inhabit this role. And then we look back and we, uh, and we see she couldn't be bothered to turn up to a um, Commons Select Committee meeting. So not only stupid, but lazy, dishonest, and lacking the principles of confidentiality. I'm sure there's some allegedly there that I should add. I think, um, I think she was badly advised. And I think uh, the person who gave her, gave her the advice has probably um, hung her out to dry because that letter gives the impression of her being stupid, deceitful, and uh, uh, break, uh, 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 garrulous. Um, it's, it's damning, utterly, utterly damning. And Farage should sue. Um, she will be long gone, of course, but I think Farrah should sue the bank. It's the bank that's responsible for this nonsense. And I think also everybody who has had their accounts suspended or removed or who have felt they've been obliged to leave one bank in order to go to another because that bank is just simply um, useless, they should all have compensation and they should all have their accounts back. And this nonsense of the bank being greater than the customer needs to go. It needs to go out of the window. It needs to be thrown to the devil.